but today the title of my sermon is foolish wisdom foolish wisdom is someone willing to say that with me this morning foolish wisdom ah uh, what do you mean preacher when you talk about wisdom and you say it's foolish well we're going to look in scripture and we're going to find something that matches that but before we do let's pray again oh father of all flesh we bow before you in appreciation of who you are lord we pray we plead we beg of you to open our minds to open our ears help us to behold wondrous things from your word father be glorified my lord be honored in our midst today let your word come out unhindered and let us know that we have been with the lord i ask in the name of the father and the son and the holy ghost amen, amen. we have come to the first year anniversary of covid 19. not a very glad one but indeed it's history it was exactly march 11 a year this week that the world health organization declared the novel coronavirus covid 19 outbreak a global pandemic there had been a total lockdown in china's hubei province in january of 2020 but very soon lockdowns began here and there in the united states the very first was march 15 in then a state where i'm preaching from was march 25 and um the entire 1.3 billion population of india was ordered to stay at home during this total lockdown uh, the largest uh, in, in history, we can say, uh, with connected with coronavirus, was March 24, 2020. And it's been a year now. You hardly find someone that you know that has not been touched by the virus one way or another. If you've not been touched with someone that you know that was affected, maybe your finances, your work life, even gathering to worship, has changed it's been a year of death and agony isolation and loneliness remote learning and virtual worship shuttered businesses and unemployment shattering in place and walking from home deserted airports and restricted travel it's been a year of depression and uncertainty fear anxiety lonely death and isolated grieving with over half a million dead from the dreaded virus in the United States and over 2.6 million worldwide. But yet it's been a year of hope and trust. Through it all, we have learned to trust in Jesus. We've learned to depend upon his holy name. We have claimed the promises of scripture. The God is our refuge, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High can still abide. Under the shadow of the Almighty, we can still say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In all my trust, he'll deliver you from the snare of the fly and from the noisome pestilence of COVID-19. For through many dangers and toils and snares, we have already come. Grace of God has brought us thus far, and grace will lead us through and lead us home. Do you say amen here today? Yet, coronavirus and now the vaccines have come with myriads of 
theories, wild theories about coronavirus. Did you hear the, the, the theory that the virus came from space and it reached the earth through a space rock or a meteor? Did you hear the one that said it came through 5G technology? You had that one? Now, I don't know how foolish we can get because 5G had been around before then. Some have called it the great reset of capitalism or, or, or political globalism. So it's all planned by the rich. And then you have the QAnon and the COVID-19. They said it's not a pandemic, it is a scamdemic. That there is a world agenda that is programming something. Some have even said that the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Well, you know what? I, I had my first shot on Thursday, just two days ago. And I ain't got no arms yet. Right. <laughs> my wife took our full doses about a month ago already. I live with that woman. She ain't got no ones hiding anywhere. The vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Some said it's the plight of the big pharmaceutical companies to make all of us ill. And then you had those young people in colleges having com you know, competition of who will get infested with it first. So they had COVID-19 parties in frat houses. And then there are the foolish who say COVID-19 does not exist. The globalists are just going to take away our freedoms from us. And I can go on and on and on with a lot of foolish theories that well-meaning people, educated people, rich people, connected people have decided to believe even though it is foolish. And then God reminded me this week, you know, this is a fool's paradise. The world is the fool's paradise. Do you know that in this country there are still people who believe that Donald Trump won the presidential election? And some have put millions of US dollars to support that foolish claim. Now, before somebody thinks I'm democratic or a supporter of Joe Biden, well, that's none of anybody's business, which political party or somebody, another person votes for, but the truth be told, it is foolish. If I saw, some were expecting this same month, March 4th, that Donald Trump will be installed as president of the United States. And there are folks who still believe it and they're confident enough to spread their foolish thoughts online. Now, he may be president next time around, but he ain't the president for the next four years. Whoever becomes president does not really matter, but truth matters. Fool's paradise. Somebody said, what does that mean? It is a state of delusionary happiness a state of happiness based on mistaken beliefs and and false ideas this world is the fool's paradise people fool around and enjoy being fooled fool's paradise sometimes you listen to lovers young lovers and you don't know who is the fool out of both of them. Or maybe the Buddha. Did you hear this conversation of, you know, this young guy talking to his girlfriend or woman friend on the phone? Oh, you have the rose on my lily. You have the sugar in my tea. The bread in my butter. I will go and swim the high seas just to get to you. You are the one that makes my heart pump. Now, somebody is noticing that I've used those words of my wife before, right? 
Because I didn't get to know all this. But you see, the end of the conversation was this. Baby, I love you to hell and back, to heaven and back. And nothing can stop my love for you. Last words. I will see you tonight if it does not rain. And the girl's head is blowing that somebody has shown so much love. You cross the ocean, but if it rains tonight, who is fooling who? This world has become a fool's paradise. Fantasy land, fairy land, dream world. Where we enjoy fool's errand. That's needless, profitless endeavor. Where we seek after fool's gold. A mineral that looks like gold but is not gold. Where we fool about. That is we do things that are not useful or serious. And waste time. Where we fool around and spend time idly. Aimlessly and frivolously. We act up and clown around and cut up and us around and monkey around and show up and show up and skylark. This is the fool's paradise. We deceive ourselves and enjoy being deceived. Fool's paradise that we call our home on earth. With so much foolery, foolish act and utterance, we love those who deceive us, who tell us what we want to hear. Foolery, absurdity, and, 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 and fruity, and, and folly, and, and foppery, and idiocy, and imbecility, and, and in, insanity, and lunacy. Plain stupidity and lack of good sense. This is the fool's paradise. And whilst we're here, it's okay to enjoy your taste of a little foolishness every now and then. But the Lord has brought me here just to tell you that this issue of wisdom versus foolishness has eternal dimensions to it. I open my Bible and I read, for instance, the text that we started out with today. James 1.5 If you lack wisdom, ask God. He gives all people liberally, does not upbraid, and God will give it to you. Amen, somebody. I also read in Psalm 14. This issue has eternal consequence. That's why I'm talking about foolish wisdom. Because those who believe their wise. Who act foolishly. And things that appear foolish. That represent the wisdom of God. The fool the Bible says in Psalm 14 verse 1. Has said in his heart. That there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that does good. The fool says in his heart that there is what? No God. The mental fool. The moral fool. And when Christians live as if there is no God, they live like fools. You may be in church today virtually or in person, but if you act like there is no God, the Bible has given you a name. It's called foolish. Then there is the mocking fool. In Proverbs 49. Proverbs 49. The fool makes a mock at sin. But among the righteous, there is favor. Whenever we laugh at silly, sinful jokes. The Bible says we are fools. When we enjoy those things that mock God and righteousness on social media or in a favorite show on TV, as you laugh yourself out, just know 
that there's foolishness in that. Whenever we treat sin lightly, it's foolishness. And don't we, don't I, find sinful jokes intriguing. When I do, I am a fool. When you do, you are a fool. And foolishness has eternal consequences. Achan, in a moment of greed, he treated sin lightly and met his Waterloo. Worse still, his foolishness cost not only his life, but his entire household. Joshua 7.21 David in a moment of immorality saw a woman birthing and she sent and took her and lay with her. 2 Samuel 11.4 killed the husband and peace eluded him from that day onwards. Yes, he was a child of God I'm sure he will make it to heaven when Jesus comes. But that foolish act had consequences for the rest of his life. One son of his molested and raped another daughter of his. Sometimes we will be saved but we will have suffered for our foolishness down here. I call this place fool's paradise and this message is for you and i for the christian church to stop acting foolish because there are consequences you might get saved but you have left a trail of foolishness and your wife is benefiting in quote from it and generations unborn are affected by such foolishness. I gotta be careful and not make the road to heaven that is already hard and narrow to become harder through my foolishness. Are you hearing the word of God here today? Tell your neighbor, be wise. Come on now, tell someone beside you, be wise. The road is already hard. Don't make it harder. Belshazzar, in a moment of idolatry, the Bible says in Daniel 5, 7, for they drank wine and praised the God of gold and silver. That night, in his drunken butchery and foolishness, there was a writing without hands. Many, many, it said. The end of his kingdom and reign. Are there any sins you are treating lightly? Are there any sins I'm treating lightly? Are there words and actions and thoughts and habits of foolishness? The Holy Spirit has something for you and I. And then there's the material fool. You read about him in Luke 12. Fools believe they can be happy by accumulating more stuff. The more stuff I have, the happier my life will be. Have I not said that? In Luke 12, 13 to 31, you can read that story. You can read the story. Verse 13. One came to Jesus and said, Master, speak to my brother that he may divide the inheritance with me. You think it's from the inheritance that you get happy. That's foolish, Jesus says. And so Jesus in verse 15 says, take heed. Beware of covetousness for a man's life, a woman's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he or she possesses. When what you possess possesses you, you are a fool. And this is what the Bible says. And then Jesus tells a parable of a rich man whose land brought out plenty for food. And verse 17 says, what shall I do now? I don't have room for my fruit now. He had labored and he was harvesting. The man did not steal. He worked hard. 
He said, I'll pull down my band. I'll build a bigger one. I'll put all my food and goods in it. I'll say to my soul, verse, verse, verse 19, Oh, you've worked hard, man. It's time to eat and drink and be merry. Then God said, what did God say, verse 20, everyone? Fool. Man. He said, you're a fool. Now, this thing is very touching for me. Because I know about starting life in America from the very bottom of the ladder. I don't think I'm anywhere, anywhere high in the ladder. But I ain't sure at the same bottom I was. And I want to celebrate the fact that God has brought me through some mighty long way. But anytime I think that that's an achievement to celebrate outside of God. Anytime I think that man... I've already suffered in this land. It's time for me to relax. God should leave me alone. Let me relax. God says, thou fool. Every time we believe that we have worked hard enough and served God hard enough, long enough, we are this many generation Adventists, second generation, fifth generation. I don't know which one you are. And we have a right to things in this place. God says, thou fool. Those who are ahead of you, where are they today? Thou fool. The day your soul will be required of you. Then what you, what you have gathered, another person will use. Thou fool. Now this is very serious. As a preacher, I preach my heart out. Maybe I'm even doing that a little bit today. I work hard. But God says, look at you, fool. If you drop dead now, your children will mourn for a while, but they'll move on with their lives. Your spouse will mourn for long, but someone else may be on top of her who knows how many years after. In fact, if it's a him, they might say, you know, as a man, you should get married soon. You know, it's not good for a man to be alone. Nah. And you have killed yourself because of him. Everything you gather together, someone else will enjoy it with him. God says, thou fool! Life is unfair. Yes, I know. But we are foolish when we don't understand that God must be the center. You must be the enjoyment of your life, not stuff. Never hold stuff too strong. Hold things lightly. Hold God tight. Yes, sir. Oh, thou fool. Who is a fool? Verse 21. One who has laid up treasure for himself or herself, but is not rich towards God. If you are not rich towards God and you are hearing this message, God calls you your name. Yeah. Fool. Rich towards God means you have been saving up in the heavenly bank account. You are faithful. Not only in tithe, but in generous offering. You are serving your God. You are doing your best. Not the minimum. Be rich towards God. It means you don't arrive at church for the sermon. You are there for Sabbath school. Amen, somebody. Rich towards God. Many of you are rich towards materials and poor towards God. If God were to give me the attention I give him, I will not be breathing. Life is more than meat. The body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens. They don't sow or reap, but God feeds them. Don't take stock of stuff. When you are consumed with how you're going to make it, at the detriment of your relationship with God, he calls you a fool. Look at Solomon in all his glory. He's not like the lilies. So this is very tough stuff here. I should not possess Foolish wisdom. That is, I think I'm wise when I'm acting so foolish. We spend our time walking, 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 and I have no time for God. We think 
about our needs and never the needs of others. Jesus calls us fools. Ooh, he does. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things enter and they have choked the word of God. They have choked your Adventism. They have choked your faith and you have become unfruitful. Mark 4, 19. That's how to describe a fool. This may describe you. First, I was dying to finish my high school and college. Then I was dying to finish college and start working. Then I was dying to marry and have children. Then I was dying for my children to grow old enough so I can go back to work or work some more. Then I was dying to retire. I've worked so hard. And now I am dying. And suddenly I realized that I forgot to leave. Many of us make money. And as we make money, we lose our health. And then to restore our health, we have to give up our money. We live as if we're never going to die. And we die like we never live. You see, the fool fails to plan for eternity. So that was why in verse 20 and 21 of that Luke 12, God said to him, you fool, this now your soul will be required of you. And you know, you are not rich towards God. That is to say, when we act the fool, eternity is jeopardized. This is important. After you have acquired all and done all, will you lose your soul? So when Adventists live like there is no investigative judgment going on right now, we live like fools. When Adventists live like there is no second coming, we live like fools. Now, there are so many fools in the Bible. Let me remind you of a few quick ones. I've meant a few, but there is more. In fact, you first mention this negative wisdom, foolish wisdom, when you read in Genesis 3 verse 1 about the snake, the serpent. He was described as crafty. Arum is the word in the original Hebrew language. And you know the story. His wisdom was a cunning wisdom. It was foolish wisdom. And he drew Eve into it. And Adam followed. Adam was not deceived. He opened his eyes. It was the woman that was deceived. Adam walked into this thing like a fool. Wisdom that is twisted was found when Amnon raped his blood sister Tamar. At the advice of their crafty cousin, Jonadab. Twisted wisdom in scripture. Even Solomon, the wisest man we talk about. The negative aspect of his reign came with idolatry and adultery. Foolish wisdom. The kings usually had the best advisors around. But many of them had their advices turned upside down. Why? Because... They thought more of maintaining their position than speaking truth to power. Foolish! Even Job, who had friends, who came to consult and, 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 and console him. They did not apply the right wisdom. I'm talking of Eliphaz and Bildad and Sofa. In their rigid arguments, they spoke foolishness in the name of wisdom. Saul, Israel's king, when he attempted to kill David. Oh, what a fool. He was a disbelieving fool. We read about already in Psalm 41, uh, Psalm 14, 1, who says there's no God. And then there is this slandering fool, Proverbs 10, 18, who has a bad habit of bad-mouthing believers. Slandering fool. A disobedient fool who despises his parents' instruction. Proverbs 15, 5. A self-centered fool who is blinded by his own fault. Proverbs 12, 15. Sexually impure fool who allows a harlot 
to destroy his soul messing around with someone you're not married with we have the mocking fool who laughs at the seriousness of sin that's in proverbs 49 the sexual impure fool is proverbs 7 7 to 27 then we have the short-tempered fool who cannot control his temper cannot control our temper proverbs 14 17 we have a meddling fool who deliberately stirs up strife proverbs 20 verse 3 then we have the thoughtless fool who attempts to build a life upon foundations other than the word of god matthew 7 26 we have an unprepared fool who makes no spiritual plans for the future matthew 25 3 what about the rich fool we just read about him in luke 12 20 and we have a philosophical fool who substitute the worship of things for the worship of god romans 1 22. they have studied so much that they are twisted and they begin to believe things and do things that are not convenient we have the ignorant fool who does not know of the power of god to raise the dead in the resurrection first corinthians 15 56. then we have the legalistic fool who returns to the bondage of law exempt from the blessings of grace there may be many who call themselves church members who do this you are not saved by your power we study today that you buy without money and without price because jesus paid it all all to him i owe hallelujah to the lamp of god wisdom true wisdom must be predicated on obedience to the law of god deuteronomy 4 6 but that obedience is coming out of grace coming because jesus works in you to do the obey that's true wisdom wisdom that comes from revelation knowledge like what you found with daniel and his friend like what you found with joseph in egypt that's the kind of knowledge that is wise you know there's a man whose name is fool in the bible I wish I had time I should talk about him for a minute. I think I should. Do you know his name? Nabal is his name. The story is found in 1 Samuel 25. The Bible says there was a man. His name is Nabal. And the name means fool. Now I'm an African man. And names matter a lot. Names are prophetic. They speak to your future. Names describe the circumstance around your back. Names describe the kind of family you come from. Can I go on and on and on and on? Names are prophetic. I, mean, I don't know who will name his child a fool. Man, the man acted like a fool, man. But this man, before you despise him, he got some dough, man. He had money. So there are foolish people who have money too. Foolishness does not discriminate. Foolishness can allow you to be a professor. It can allow you to be a president of a country. Foolishness can permit you to have children and wives and a big estate. But you are still a fool. If you take a pygmy and put him on top of Mount Everest or Mount Kilimanjaro, a pygmy is still what? A pygmy. Take a fool, install him as a pastor. Like me, he is still a fool if we will not learn wisdom of God. Nabal was a fool. Maybe if time will permit me, I can give a few suggestions. If you are to end up in the company run by a fool, in a marriage partnered by a fool, and in a situation where there's a fool around you, do you want a few suggestions? Well, Abigail is the answer to that. See, Abida was a wise wife of a foolish husband. Hello? It's not only men that are foolish. There are women that are foolish too. Hello? In fact, Proverbs, Proverbs 11.22 describes what I call wasted beauty. He it says it's like a gold ring in a pig's 
snoot. A beautiful woman who has no wisdom shows no discretion. Go and read it. Proverbs eleven twenty two. Beautiful, like a gold ring. But there is so much indiscretion and foolishness in her behavior. In fact, a foolish woman will use her own behavior, her own mouth, her own attitude to destroy the home that she has built. Send her children away. Foolishness. Foolishness. Too much foolishness around. So let's read this. But Abigail, a name means my father is joyful. My father rejoices. Let me tell you this. There is joy in heaven when you embrace Jesus and the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. The, the book of Proverbs says that a child who behaves well is the joy of the father. But a child who behaves badly is the sadness of the mother. Now, I don't know why the Bible will discriminate like that, but go and read it in Proverbs. Abigail means the father rejoices. The wisdom of God will be poured upon your life in the name of Jesus. And heaven will rejoice because of you. When your child acts right, your head blows up like this. When your child acts wrong, you feel like turning your head away. That is what happens with God and I. When I act right, he is sad and Satan rejoices. Today, who is rejoicing over you? Hell or heaven? Abigail was a, a noble woman, intelligent and beautiful in spite of being connected with foolish men in her. She acted modestly and she had it acted like a model. You can read the story there. She was kind and tactful, nice to the junior workers, the servants, the housemaids, and all. She had humility and praise, and she was humble. She was a mediator, a peacemaker, a real leader. If you find yourself connected with a fool in marriage or work or wherever. These are some good ways to overcome. Hello, somebody. Oh, time will not permit me to remind you of what happened. That, you know, David was angry and he got his army to go. David was stupid, though. He, he, was, he was not acting with wisdom. Because somebody did not give you bugger. Now you're going to go kill everybody in that house? Don't I act like that sometimes, don't you? Because of food, is about to shed blood. But look at Abigail. Abigail began to speak to David, to speak to his future. He began to say things that God has said about him. If you are connected with a fool as a child, a husband, or a wife, or, or, or a boss at the job, or a colleague, speak what the Bible says about that person. Hello? Oh, let me round this up quickly. Of course, you know the rest of the story. This woman of prayer and praise ended up marrying David and becoming the wife of a king. Amen. Now, the woman had been married before, but she was wise enough. David needed her. You see what wisdom can do to you? When you think it's over, wisdom will put you in high demand. I thought there would be a lot of events. Oh, really? When you have wisdom, they don't allow you to, re to, 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 to retire even after you have retired. That's wisdom. I claim that for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, finally this morning, Jesus told the story of the foolish virgin and the white wise virgin. They both loved the Lord. Matthew 25. You read the story there. They both loved the Lord. They both believed in the prophecies. They were both Adventists. All side, five wise, five foolish, all virgin. That means they were careful about their life. They were waiting for Jesus to come. They both had lambs. Both groups trimmed their lambs. Both groups were tired while waiting. And both groups slumbered and slept off. The five wise virgin and the five foolish virgin were human like you and I. What was the difference? The extra oil. When I talk about foolish wisdom, I'm saying, whenever 
You don't desire the Holy Spirit in your life. You may be a preacher, but you are foolish. You may be an elder, but you are foolish. The difference is the extra oil. Whoever is not filled with the Holy Spirit, God has a right to say what he said in Matthew 25, 12. What did he say? Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. I end today by saying, keep your land burning with the oil of the Holy Ghost, not your own hype. Keep your land burning with the oil of the Holy Ghost, not activities devoid of the Holy Ghost. He is your wisdom. He is my wisdom. So he says, in James 1 5. If you lack wisdom, my child, ask God. He may not give you riches, but He will give you wisdom. Amen. If you lack wisdom, ask God. He will give you plentifully. He will not joke about it. It will be given to you. He may not give long life, but He will give wisdom. He may not give houses and well and estate but he will give wisdom it doesn't matter how old you already are there are old people that are not wise wisdom is not about age we have young people filled with the holy ghost and wisdom watch your desire today don't remain in foolish wisdom embrace the word of god embrace obedience to his law embrace and desire the holy ghost Pray for the Holy Spirit to inspire your every word and action and stop living a fool's paradise. Yes, Bow your heads with me. And say, Father, I want to live in your wisdom. I'm tired of foolishness. Too much foolishness in church. Fighting one another. Foolishness. Fighting for control over the church. Foolishness. Father, I want the Holy Ghost in my life. He is the difference. We are all waiting for the second coming. Holy Spirit is what will take me to the finish line. So that the door is not shut. I embrace you, Holy Spirit. Talk to God. I embrace you there, Father. Holy Spirit, fill me, fuel me, change me. I desire that wisdom you promised in James 1 5. I need that wisdom, Lord. We have prayed in Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify you, we magnify you. Enough of foolish wisdom. We want the wisdom that comes from above. We want the wisdom the Holy Ghost gives. Father, this is our plea. This is our victory. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Give us wisdom, Lord. The wisdom. Wisdom.